Over the past 2,000 years, the jasmine flower from the west took root on the plains along the lower reaches of the Min River in southern China. The hills around the plain became the fertile home of tea. The ancestors of Fuzhou citizenry ingeniously combined these two plants and created the fragrant Fuzhou jasmine tea. In the past, all the local households planted jasmine and people toasted their own tea leaves to make their own household tea. This is a common memory shared by the people of Fuzhou. Now, the younger generations will get to know more about these two plants growing in the fields. At the beginning of the new semester, in September 2013, a research program about the culture of Fuzhou jasmine and tea is held at the Fuzhou Foreign Languages School. It aims to help the high school students understand the reasons why locally produced jasmine tea is of such high quality, the current market situation and the relationship between the flower and local culture. The main reason for this research program is that Fuzhou jasmine tea culture is seeking to be added to the globally important agricultural heritage systems list. <laughs> Lian Dingxiang is the leader of the nature team looking at environmental issues. The research aims to pinpoint the reasons and advantages that made the Fuzhou Basin the birthplace of jasmine tea. To get the answers, they go to the place where the flowers grow. Lin contacts a local flower grower on the internet who agrees to show the students his field. Huang Shi village is located on an alluvial plain. There are hills to the west and south. Its western area is higher than its eastern part, making it very suitable for drainage. Nearby are rivers that can provide an irrigation source. This place fits the descriptions given about the perfect environment for growing jasmine flowers. Jasmine loves a warm, moist, sunny environment. Fuzhou is the northernmost place where jasmine can be grown out in the open. At the same time, the economic team, led by Liu Xingchen, is going to carry out a survey on the marketing and sale of jasmine tea. Three lanes and seven alleys is a Fuzhou neighborhood with an ancient history. The layout of the streets has remained the same for a thousand years. Recently, tourism here has ramped up and the area has become a popular place to visit. Liu thinks that tourists are relaxed and are more likely to complete the questionnaire. Her colleagues agree and they split up to carry out their task. The students have designed 10 questions according to people's age, consumption habits, and spending power. Chen Yao is the leader of the team looking at social and cultural issues, the society team. Their task is to examine the interplay 
between Fuzhou's jasmine flower, jasmine tea, and local history and culture. Chen plans to pay a visit to Feng Bingwei, an expert in folk customs, hoping to find some answers. Feng Bingwei is an expert on the culture of Fuzhou. He says the jasmine flower was introduced into Fuzhou from India during the Western Han Dynasty and then slowly worked its way into local people's lives. Fuzhou people consider the jasmine flower to be a lucky symbol. In the local dialect, its pronunciation is similar to that of never parting. Thus, jasmine tea symbolizes everlasting love. In traditional Chinese wedding ceremonies, the new couple drink jasmine tea to express their wish for a long marriage. Through Fang's explanation, Chen's team gains a basic understanding about the history of jasmine tea. Though the story about Ye Xiang Gao and jasmine tea is a folk legend in Fuzhou, there is strong evidence that large fields of jasmine flowers existed in Fuzhou during the Ming and Qing dynasties. Jasmine tea is the combination of the wisdom of hard-working tea makers and sophisticated merchants. When the society team says goodbye to Mr. Fung, the nature team is obtaining soil samples from a jasmine field. They will take the samples to the city and try to analyze the soil conditions that help jasmine flowers flourish. Oh, the flowers in this field in the southern area grow well, while those in the northern part look yellow and dry. Lin Yongguang wonders if the soil in the northern part lacks phosphorus, which is mere speculation on his part. So, he asked the students to take samples of the soil in the two areas, hoping to verify his theory through analysis. The Min River estuary is made up of many small patches of lowland plain. With abundant water, the Min and Wulong rivers pass through the basin. The sandy soil on their banks is moist and fertile and has good permeability. It's because of this that jasmine is mainly grown along river banks. The rivers provide sufficient irrigation. This is the perfect environment for the light and warmth loving jasmine plant. What's more, the basin is surrounded by hills and perfect for tea cultivation, which requires several hours of direct sunlight, periods of diffuse light, large temperature differences, abundant rainfall, high humidity, and acidic soil. Tea trees grow well in this area.
For hundreds of years, the growing of jasmine alongside tea trees made it easy for freshly picked flowers to be used to scent the tea. It made the area perfect for the production of jasmine tea. Chen Yao has a problem. Though his team have heard many stories from Fang Bingwei, they lack concrete evidence and can't meet their teachers' requirements for their report. Their research into the history and culture of this city needs to be supported by evidence and facts. They decide to visit the places Mr. Fung mentioned and shoot some video there. The society team locate the city sites associated with tea, Tea Garden Mountain, Tea Pavilion Park, and Tea Garden Bridge. If these three places represent the past of jasmine tea culture, then the thousands of tea houses, tea factories, and people making a living from tea represent its present. As long as they can find decent evidence, it won't be that difficult to prove that jasmine tea has enjoyed a long history in the area. I live near the Min River estuary. Come and have some tea when you have time. My house has cob walls, wooden doors, and grey tiles. In front of it is a patch of jasmine flowers. This poem describes the idyllic scenery of Fuzhou. After 90 minutes, Liu Xingchen and her team finally finish the questionnaires. The statistics they collect show that about 30% of respondents like drinking jasmine tea and most of them are over 40 years old. Maybe because they don't know much about how it's produced, the price they are willing to pay for the tea is quite low, which disappoints the students a little. Wu Li Ting Tea Market is their next survey site. It's the largest tea market in downtown Fuzhou Through communication with tea merchants, the economic team learn that since the late 90s, with the expansion of the city and an increasingly frenetic lifestyle, respect for the labor-intensive and low-profit jasmine industry has gradually been dwindling. Mm. More and more horticulturalists have switched to more profitable businesses. Jasmine production has rapidly decreased, resulting in a drop in the output of Fuzhou jasmine tea. In the meanwhile, other types of tea have become popular, leading to a shrinking of jasmine tea's market share. The society team has visited three landmark buildings and shot some video of them. It suddenly occurs to Chen Yao that, over a century ago, Taijiang Wharf was one of the busiest commercial hubs in the tea trade. It's definitely a place worth visiting. Mm -hmm. 
Shanghang and Xiahang are two very famous streets in the old commercial area of Taijiang. They're about to undergo restoration and revival. Many people, including art and history buffs, have come here to take snapshots before the construction crews move in. Chen Yao and his team meet Chi Jihai, who paints the hand-drawn maps. He's taking photos of some antique door patterns. During the conversation, the students learn that Chu has just written a book entitled A Search for Western Style Houses in Changshan District. It describes the massive changes that took place on the southern bank of the Min River, influenced by the tea trade over a century ago. Changshan District faces Shanghang and Xiahang streets across the Min River. If these two streets represent the local historical commercial culture of Fuzhou, the old western style houses in Changshan represent foreign influence in Fuzhou. Behind these two cultural entities are the huge influences exerted by the once robust tea trade. The British were first attracted to the area by tea. Soon afterwards, Western-style buildings began springing up. After 1860, as a port forced open by foreign powers, Fuzhou exported over 1,800 tons of jasmine tea annually. This accounted for 35% of the country's total export volume of tea and became one of the largest tea ports in the world. The nature team has come to seek help from a soil expert. The analysis conducted by the experimental instrument shows that the soil they took from the jasmine field is faintly acidic, which is suitable for the growing of jasmine. But why do some flowers grow well in the same field, while others are dry and yellow? The analysis carried out using the experimental instrument and the expert's explanation proves Lin Yongguang's speculation. The expert also provides another important piece of information. In 1988, Peking University made a comparison between the 43 compounds contained within Fuzhou jasmine flowers and the jasmine grown elsewhere. It showed that the unique and distinctive flavor of Fuzhou jasmine is caused by its distinctive terrain and environment, the terroir. The three teams' time in the field flies by. Now it's time for a conclusion. The nature team's report is about the climate, soil and topography that has led to the unique fragrance of the Fuzhou jasmine flower. The economic team is satisfied with the fruits of their labor but they are disappointed about the conclusion of their marketing report. The fragrance of jasmine tea is the fruit of a complicated procedure and a lot of hard work. The problem is, it doesn't receive a positive market response. 
Why is this? The student's conclusion is that the marketing of the tea should be enhanced and the tea should be commercially packaged to cater to the public. After presenting their research, the society team pull out their secret weapon. <笑>茶奶茶奶<笑> The week-long research ends in laughter. <laughs> this summer field investigation has enhanced their knowledge about their hometown. The research records a conversation between the younger and older generations. When the young people experience the joys and pains of laboring in the fields, they will have truly inherited the cultural gene of their hometown and perhaps find a new future for jasmine tea. Like their tea, an easygoing attitude is at the heart of the Fujo approach to life. Their special tea is delicately balanced with the infused scent of their jasmine flowers. It's also brought them prosperity, which has funded their relaxed lifestyle. Find out more in the final episode of The Jasmine Flower.